we're going to be looking at the kinetic theory of gases. So the kinetic theory of gases is a theoretical attempt to explain the behaviour of gases that has been observed experimentally. And the word kinetic implies that we're going to be looking at the motion of the gas molecules. And one of the assumptions that we make about the motion of the gas molecules is that they're moving at a constant velocity but in random directions. We're now going to apply the kinetic theory of gases to explain why gas exerts a pressure on its container. So we say that the molecules can constantly bombard the walls of its container. And an assumption we make is that these collisions are elastic. So that is momentum and kinetic energy are both conserved. And because of the conservation of momentum when the molecule bounces off at right angles to the wall its momentum is reversed. So its initial momentum is mu and its final momentum after the collision with the wall is minus mu. So we have a change in momentum but it's not zero it's, it's our final momentum minus our initial momentum, so it's a minus mu minus mu, which makes it minus 2mu. And because we've got a change of momentum, we have an impulse. And for an impulse to occur, we need to have a force that must have acted on the molecule. And this force must have acted from the wall. So from Newton's second law, this force must be equal to the rate of change of momentum of the molecule. From Newton's third law of motion, if the wall has exerted a force on the molecule to change its momentum, well then the molecule must exert an equal and opposite force on the wall. And by calculating the average force all the gas molecules exert on a unit area of wall, we can determine the gas pressure that's been exerted. And remember from AS, the definition of pressure is force per unit area. Kinetic theory of gases shows that PV equals a third Nm V squared. Now, you don't need to know the proof of this, um, but what you do need to know is that the pressure times volume is directly proportional to V squared, the square of the velocity of the gas molecules. So from this, we can guess an equation that links the kinetic, the average kinetic energy of the gas molecules with temperature. So here we have the equation of kinetic theory of gases. If we also use the equation for ideal gas law. So our pressure times volume of a gas is equal to capital N, the number of gas molecules, times K, our Boltzmann's constant, and T, the absolute temperature of our gas molecules, that is our temperature in Kelvin. Because both these expressions equal PV, we can say that they're equal to each other. And we know the equation of kinetic energy is a half mv squared. So in this case, if we're looking at the mean kinetic energy of the gas molecules, we can say it's equal to half times m, the mass of each gas molecule, and r times by our mean square velocity of the gas molecules. We're now going to substitute for mv squared into this equation. So you can see that mv squared is equal to 2 times the mean Ke. So if we substitute that into there, we can see that our n's have cancelled out. And if we rearrange to make the mean Ke the subject, we're going to get that equaling to 3 Kt divided by 
So what this equation is showing you that the mean Ke of the gas molecules is directly proportional to the absolute temperature of the gas molecules. So we're now going to apply the kinetic theory of gases to explain Boyle's law, i.e. why pressure increases as volume decreases at constant temperature. So at constant temperature, we know that's directly proportional to the mean Ke of the gas molecules, so that has remained constant. And so at constant temperature, the velocity of our gas molecules will have remained constant because our mean Ke of the gas molecules is constant. So on a collision that the gas molecule makes with the walls of the container, the change in momentum will remain constant because the velocity of the gas molecules is constant. So now considering the distance travelled by the gas molecules between collisions, so return from, from a collision, returning back to the wall, the distance it travels, well that will have decreased. It's moving at the same velocity, but because the volume has decreased, it will have covered less distance to get back to the wall of the container for the next collision. So the time between collisions will also decrease because the distance has decreased, but the velocity has remained the same. So that means the number of collisions per unit time or per second will increase. So the rate of change of momentum will also increase. And that, yes, the change in momentum has remained the same, but the rate has increased because the number of collisions per second has increased. So if the rate of change of momentum has increased, well then that is equal to the force exerted according to Newton's second law of motion. And so we can say the force exerted by the gas molecules has also increased. So if the force exerted by the gas molecules has increased, well that means the pressure has increased. We're now going to use the kinetic theory of gases to explain why pressure increases as temperature increases for a constant volume of gas. If temperature increases, the mean kinetic energy of the gas molecules will also increase, because remember, mean Ke of the gas molecules is directly proportional to the temperature. So the velocity of the gas molecules will have also increased. And so again, on collision, the change in momentum of the gas molecule when it's colliding with the walls of the container will increase because the velocity of the gas molecules has increased. Remember, the change in momentum is given by minus 2 mv. The distance travelled by the gas molecules between collisions, however, remains the same because we have a constant volume of gas constant volume container. Looking at the time between collisions, however, that decreases. And that's because, yes, the distance travelled by the gas molecules between collisions remain the same. It's, however, moving at a larger velocity. So if the time between collisions decreases, well, then the number of collisions per second increases. So the rate of change in momentum also increases, and it has two effects why it's increased. One, because the change in momentum has increased, and the second effect is also the rate has increased, because the number of collisions per second has increased. And again, a reminder, the rate of change momentum is equal to the force that is acting on it. So that force acting on the gas molecules must also have increased. And hence, with the force increasing, the pressure has increased. Now going to apply 
kinetic theory of gases to explain why volume increases as temperature increases at a constant pressure. So with an increase in temperature, the mean kinetic energy of the gas molecules will increase because remember, they're directly proportional to each other. So also the, that means the velocity of the gas molecules will also increase. And so on collision, the gas molecules change momentum will also increase because the velocity has increased. However, because it's um, having a constant pressure, the force exerted by the gas molecules has to remain the same. And if you remember, force exerted is equal to the rate of change of momentum, so that has to remain the same to keep the pressure constant. So if the change in momentum we know has increased, but the rate of change of momentum has to remain the same, then the number of collisions per second has to decrease so that the overall effect will keep the force exerted or the rate of change of momentum the same. This means that the time between collisions then must increase. And for the time between collisions to increase, then the distance travelled by the gas molecules between collisions must increase. And this increase in distance travelled implies that the volume of the gas has increased.